Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Well, I've been away for a while. I've been grieving and I'm, I think I'm okay now. <laughs> and I'm happy to be back. So, we're going to pick up where we left off in the scripture and we're in the New Testament in the book of Matthew, chapter 11. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. And verse 5 is a fulfilled prophecy, and it says here, The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended, in or by me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John. He's going to talk about John now. But why would John send his disciples to Jesus to verify that he was the one that was to come? John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. And when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down and lit and stayed on him and abode on him. And that was something that John was told to watch for. Do you think, suppose, or think that John is here in prison now thinking, is this the end of what I was supposed to do? Have I done everything I was supposed to do? Is he, is he really the one? I need to know. For, for peace of my mind, I can't let this go until I know for certain he is the one. And so I think that's why John sent his disciples to question Jesus. Are you the one or should I look for another? Because here John is locked up in prison, knowing he may not get out because Herod has him locked up. And um, his wife has somewhat against John for John telling Herod that he had no business taking his brother's wife that it was a sin and he shouldn't have done it anyway we know the story of how his um, stepdaughter um, danced and he promised her for whatever she wanted up to half of his kingdom and she went back and asked her mom mom what should I ask for and the mom being so spiteful and angry about what John said, her being married to Herod wasn't right. So she asked for John's head on a charger. And the king, he really liked John. He liked talking to him and listening to him. But he couldn't go back on his word. He had all these captains and big people, you know, high ups, sitting there. Who heard him tell her, I'll give you whatever you want, up to half of my kingdom. Just ask me. He couldn't go back on his word. He would have been a liar in front of all these people. So reluctantly he sent and had John beheaded. And so here we see <clears throat> John wanting to verify. Are you really the one? Tell me truly. Are you the one? Am I to look for another? So, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Now in verse 10 here is a fulfilled prophecy. 
And it says, For this is he of whom it is written. And this is in caps, all caps. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. John was sent to make his path straight. He was baptizing with water. And he said there would be one come after him who would baptize with fire or the Holy Spirit. Verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Verse 13 is a fulfilled prophecy. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if we look at verse 16, six, chapter 16, verse 16, in the book of Luke, we're going to read this. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every man pressing into it. So chapter 13, uh, not check, excuse me, verse 13 back in chapter 11 in Matthew, it says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, or Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets, and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you. And ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you. And ye have not lamented. You haven't responded. You didn't respond to us. For John came neither eating nor drinking. And they say he hath a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking. And they say behold a gluttonous and a wine bibber. A friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children or by her children verse 20 then began he to upbraid the cities wherewith excuse me wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not this is jesus and he's talking to all the cities where he's gone and preached and they didn't repent woe unto thee chorazin woe unto thee bethesda for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained unto this day. But I say unto you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Well, why would that be? Well, here the Son of God is here, preaching to them and teaching them, and they refused him. Verse 25, And at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hath revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn of me or about me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is lowly and humble. He didn't come beating on his chest going, look at me, look at me. So if Satan is the complete opposite, but imitating Jesus, what do you think he's going to do when he comes? Do you think he's going to come in going, hey, look at me, check me out. I am the thing here. You need to be with me. Or do you think he's going to come acting like he's humble? Remember in Revelation 13, he has horns like the lamb, but spake is the dragon. He's going to deceive a lot of people because they don't know the scripture. They're not listening to those that are teaching. They're not reading it for themselves. They're going to be deceived. And then there's, there's going to be this great falling away before the deception. Why is there going to be this great falling away? Because those that have been taught that the, it's going to be a um, rapture and they're not going to have to endure any of the tribulation. Well, now, if that were you and you were told that you weren't going to have to endure any of that, would you be preparing in your mind and in your soul and in, within the strength in yourself to stand during and through all that's to come that's been foretold? Re Revelation chapter 6. Read it. The four horsemen. These things. Chapter 9 in Revelation. The angels, the four angels are loosed from the river Euphrates. Chapter 16. You know, I mean, just read the scripture and know what's coming. But there are so many who will not listen, who have not read, who could care less. Because they've been told they won't be here. They'll be raptured out of here. But that was a lie created by a woman in 1830. Go look it up. Check it out for yourself. Don't trust what I'm telling you. Do your homework. Check it out and let yourself be educated in what's coming so that you can stand and be prepared, that you can put on your armor and know what the purpose of it is and how to use it and what that sword is all about, how you need to furbish it and have it ready to be handled because you're going to need it. And that's not going to be... Um, Something that you can just run away from. We're not going to be able to run away from what's coming. No more than the Israelites were able to run away when God said what he was going to do to them. Satan's going to be given power over the saints. And I, I discovered something mathematically just about an hour ago that I'm going to try to put together and share with you. And just, I want to see what you think. Anyway. And as always, <laughs> I love you.